Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. You know, we all remember when we were diagnosed and how for some of us it could be a relief. For me, it was a relief because I thought I had cancer for many years. And for some people, this is just completely terrifying and overwhelming. But to hear someone who is in the process and they've settled in and they're going through it and their opening comment to you is, oh, I only had radiation today. It's such an amazing thing to hear because we all remember being so terrified about, oh, radiation. And then once you settle in and you're in your, I had to do 44. (laughs) And so you hear Missy Hall, who is a comedy cures comedian and just a darling human being who performs all over the country, literally just said to me before I turned on the microphone, oh, it's okay. I just had to do radiation today. Like, oh, I just had to walk my dog. (laughs) (laughs) because honestly i'm only on treatment for this time last week i didn't know it would be such a throwaway statement yeah i really didn't that's so (laughs) it's like "Ah." yeah (laughs) laundry putting in a load of colors that's it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> radiation laundry and yes i do have to walk the dog so <laughs> how time. many do you have to do missy i only have to do i think it's 17 okay i am again i say only um because my understanding is there was something about the way that they can dose the radiation now that turned for my particular cancer what would have been a five and a half week sessions group of sessions to three and a half weeks Thank God. That's amazing. Yes. Don't don't you remember when they say, yes, you have to come every single day. I mean, I was 44 treatment. So every single day for 44 days, I, I literally go, I don't think I've done one thing in my life every single day for 44 days, except brush my teeth. Yes. Yeah. Because you have days where you don't brush your hair, but. Right, (laughs) right. Like even when I was working full time at a day job as a teacher, there would always be a holiday or a sick day or something like never, (laughs) never. And I remember when they were giving me the schedule, they were like, oh, but you'll have the 4th of July off and we'll tack that on at the end. And I remember thinking, well, I. I must not be that sick if they're giving me the day off on the 4th of July, but it turns out they're taking the day off on the 4th of July. I thought it was just something special for me. I'm like, no, no. I just want to say that if you are going through radiation, I did a Beating Cancer Daily episode called Flying to Radiation. And it's just this really fun strategy that I did because I had to travel from New Jersey to New York 44 days in a row, except for weekends. And so I just tried to make a game and fun out of it. And I do talk about that on that episode. So you might want to check it out if you are at a stage where you're going to do radiation or you are doing radiation. This conversation with Missy is going to go on um, beyond just this episode. I just want you to know that I've already talked about her before and she just has been part of the Comedy Cures family, meaning she is a comedian who has performed at our patient and caregiver and frontline worker shows. So for those of you who haven't had the pleasure to hear Missy perform, 
she really does so much about her own family, her own relationships, growing older, and just relatable daily life events. And so she really resonates with audiences because she has this authentic connection and authentic material. Now, when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, she started throwing in navigating her own journey with cancer into her act. And she's always told me that she believes that laughter is the best medicine. So I just want to give you a framework for who Missy is if you haven't been able to hear her comedy. So Missy, being a comedian, loving laughing, loving writing comedy, and loving performing comedy. How did you go from the cancer diagnosis, seeing glimmers of things that made you feel that tingle of something could be funny to actually sitting down and writing your first joke again? Do you know it? I hadn't thought about that until this very moment. Things were percolating in my head. But there were moments when the people working with me at the cancer center would see that I was a comedian. And I I don't know why this is choking me up, but there was this wonderful ultrasound tech who asked me if I had a card in my purse, because I had on my hospital gown with my purse over my shoulder. And she said, she goes, because I'd love to come see you someday. And that This is a woman who is doing her job with mammography all day and knows the state of mind I'm in was walking me down the hall with her arm around me. And at that moment was like, she sees me as a person. She sees me as a comedian. And that kind of felt that come back. And um, when I was public with my diagnosis, People who are just fans, you know, on Facebook and stuff that I haven't even met would message me and say, I know you are going to be cracking up all of the other patients and cracking up your doctors and cracking up audiences. And I didn't feel that way. Like I didn't feel like cracking anybody up. Did that make you feel pressure of any kind? That's what I was going to say. My first thought was, this isn't funny. I'm not being funny right now. I'm not doing comedy right now. But that wrapped up in when I would go in and things that I thought would be funny kind of universally whether you have whether you have cancer or not, things that happen in hospitals, things that happen in doctors offices, awkward moments, things like that. Instead of just thinking of them as my own funny experience, like everything else that's in my act started going in the notebook. And then that's when I was like, okay, those little winks from that ultrasound tech and from people on social media that for a moment felt like too much suddenly, I think that was, you know, spiritually telling me like, no, this is still here. This is still here for you. And sometimes hearing that from the people who don't really know you and love you personally is a bigger push than your comedian friends or your husband or your kids go, no, you can still do this. Having the world say, we're ready to hear this from you made me right. And that made me right. And um, so I've been journaling everything. And some of it has already made it onto stage. And can you give us an example of one of the bits? Yes. One of them was the, the day that the surgeon told me, look, we are going to be able to treat this. We can manage this. And he's like, and the silver lining of this is you're going to have the breasts of a 20 year old. And my joke is, well, she's going to be really mad. Like 
Do you have a 20 year old stashed here just waiting to go in? Should we offer her another part of mine as a, as a fair trade? Like this feels like a lot to ask somebody. (laughs) (laughs) Right. <laughs> and, you know, and then my radiologist, the first thing he asked me is like, who's your favorite comedian? I went, who's your favorite radiologist? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you watch the latest radiologist special on Netflix, you know, <laughs> and things like that. Have, it's, it's been, and they're well received on stage. Um, so it's been, it's been nice because it, for people that have either been on in those kind of appointments or know somebody or even just are uncomfortable with cancer being talked about. Cause the minute I'm on stage and I tell everybody that I'm going through breast cancer, there's this like moment I'm like, no, I'm going to be okay. And then they hear that it gives them permission to be like, okay, yeah, that, that is pretty, pretty funny. How long did it take before you went on stage from the time you were diagnosed till when you stepped back on a comedy stage. (laughs) She's laughing, everyone. I just don't know if you can hear because she threw her head back and just started giggling so hard. So I'm just giving you a play by play in case the (laughs) mic is not picking up. She's like crying, laughing. I was on stage four days later. (laughs) <laughs> I, I I'm laughing because I didn't know what else to do. You know, I get the diagnosis. This is my only source of income. And I'm like, okay. Um, and these people are expecting me. It was a private gig. I was the only comedian. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go. And I could only use one arm. I had just had surgery on my Side. You're and, a crazy woman. It, crazy woman. It was so. Yeah. Now, do I recommend that? Maybe not. Um, but for my act, it it worked. I just want to say because I do help so many people through illnesses, including cancer, that there are people who never miss a day of work, and then there are people who just stop working and take a vacation and go out on medical leave. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. Again, your finances can also dictate how you have to do this, but there's no right or wrong way. And the fact that Missy got up, I mean, I was just visualizing you because I've had the surgery, right? with one arm (laughs) and I do go on stage and hold a microphone and people often come hug you after you perform, and you're like, ah, dodging, you know, stitches and everything that you have to dodge. So I actually started laughing with you because I know exactly what that's like to be in this situation. And so I did start the comedy cures foundation from my chemo chair and that was, you know, many surgeries after and many uh, radiation treatments after. And it's just, I know that you are a beast (laughs) to do that. So I'm just like laughing yet, you know, admiring and knowing how crazy you are and the amount of focus and concentration it takes to be the only comedian on a show. Because even if you're doing a 20 minute set, that's a lot. But if you're headlining at a 45 minute to an hour set and you have all of these drugs working out of your system and painkillers and stitches, and you're trying to remember an hour or whatever it was of comedy, but yeah. not just recite it, like actually act it out and be right. funny because you're so animated. I'm yes. like, oh my gosh. That's when I realized my arm wasn't working. I didn't, I came home and I told my husband who, bless his heart. He's like, honey, you don't have to do this. I'm like, I really do. Um, But I was telling him, I didn't realize what a physical person I am until I went to raise my arm above my head. And I was like, oh, that doesn't do that anymore. Like, it well, was- wait a second, because I watch you a lot, right? And uh-huh. you play with your wild hair. She has beautiful, blonde, <laughs> wild hair. And she can't lift the arm that doesn't have the microphone. And it's a lot of the shtick when you're performing, you're using your hair 
And I was like, did you try to put the microphone in your head? Like what? Weird. (laughs) It was very (laughs) strange. My whole physicality changed and I wasn't. And because, and again, people who see me know that I do those things. I don't know that I'm doing them. But it that does, can throw off your timing it, I mean, oh, just yeah. in terms of timing for people who don't really know about building a comedy set. And we are working on that in this podcast, Beating Cancer Daily. We do episodes where we help you really start to develop your comic perspective. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have Missy on is because she's really clear about explaining how you build comedy and how you use this comic perspective. She does not use a character. It's really her on stage talking about her life. When you realized that you couldn't use the physical part of your comedy when you were doing that first show, did you consciously adjust and go, oh, I can't do that bit because I can't raise my arm? (laughs) Or did you just do it anyway? Some of it I did anyway. And then when I was concerned, and I don't mean to sound dramatic, but when I was concerned that I was going to start bleeding. (laughs) Don't rip your stitches. I did it. You know, it's like, this is exactly what they told me not to do. That's when I awkwardly blurted out to the audience. I am not norm. I don't normally look this confused when I'm up here. I just had surgery and I didn't realize that my arm wasn't working correctly. And I turned it in to part of my act. Does that make sense? You know, just that, like, I just adapted it. I was like, normally I would do this. I'm like, now I can't do that. And they were stunned. But then as soon as I made them laugh about it, you know, and I was like, I'm not telling you that to make you feel bad for me. I'm telling you that because, sir, I might need you to come hold this microphone so I can do this. (laughs) I just waved my arms around. I know you can't see me. But Um, that's brilliant. That that is brilliant. And we've done episodes where we talk about the element of surprise, right? Because surprise is such a major part of comedy. And so here the audience had no idea what she had gone through. She realized that she was limited at that moment because of the surgery. As her comedy is very authentic, she decided to disclose that to the audience. And instead of going down the path of woe is me, which everybody in the audience thought at that minute was going to happen because that was a reveal, She did a very common but brilliant comedy technique, which was take the audience in a completely opposite direction and get them to laugh because she turned it into an element of surprise. And I talk a lot about how we can use the element of surprise, even if you're not a comedian, to help you get through cancer treatment and survivorship. So that just proved it beautifully, Missy. That was just great. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, when you say about a tip, one of the things that somebody, even if you're not a comedian, when you are going through one of life's biggies, and this is, there are little things surrounding the big things. And my advice would be to kind of objectively take a look around and think, boy, if somebody told me this story, this would crack me up, right? Um, That does two things for you. Not only does it activate the, the comedian that lives in your brain, but it also helps you still yourself a little bit in what can be a scary situation, right? You kind of get out of your own way for a little moment and be like, wow, this is a really big thing going on. And, but I hear an alarm somewhere and no one's running. Like, should somebody be running to that alarm for the patient in the room next door? So just something that you observe um, it, that can might not even have anything to do with your own incident at the time, but as part of your doctor visit or something like that. 
I think your ability to look at a situation from 360 degrees is part of your comedy genius because you see it from your own perspective, but then you see it the way your husband would see it, your kid would see it, you know, your dog would see it. And I think that the point that you're making is just a really great technique that comedians do because they try to find the funny. And we've done, Comedy Cares has done a program called Finding the Funny, where we just really dig in. And that's what Missy's talking about. It might not be funny, but can you look at it from outside of your own situation and see the humor in it or see how you could make it funny? So I just want to thank you, Missy. I, I say this over and over again. It is such an honor to be on this cancer journey with you and that you will come and spend time at Beating Cancer Daily and break this up into micro conversations because it is a bite-sized podcast. So if you're just loving hearing Missy's perspective and her journey, I want to invite you to find her on social media and to visit her weekly show that she does with her husband. And we're going to just get all that information in a second. But I want to invite you to come back and listen to more episodes on Beating Cancer Daily. And we're just going to continue to be on this journey with Missy because it's just so authentic. She's so honest about it and so fun just to talk to. If you haven't heard other episodes with Missy, please scour through and and find them. And hopefully we'll get to talk to you more and more. But let's tell them, Missy, how they can find you on social media and also on your weekly show. Absolutely. Um, My Facebook fan page is where you can find my weekly show with my husband. And that is under Missy Hall, Queen of Happy Things is that Facebook page. Um, I also post a lot on my personal page, which is Missy G Hall on Facebook. And anybody is welcome there as well. Um, Instagram is Missy G Hall. And I my website is just Missy Hall Comedy dot com. And that will list the social media connections, but also shows in the area. But For those of you that would really like to just come join my husband and I on date night on our couch on Tuesday nights at eight Eastern standard time, just go to Missy Hall, queen of happy things and find us there. So if you would love to connect with Missy, just go to comedycures.org, hit the contact button and say, please give me all of Missy's information or hit the record button. And you know what? You can ask us questions. And the next time we sit down and talk to Missy, I'll make sure that we talk about what you're thinking and get some more humor and some more tips and some more wisdom from comedian Missy Hall. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. It was so great connecting with you today. If you'd like to connect more, Go to ComedyCures.org and check out the Beating Cancer Daily membership levels. It is so fun to meet up with all of you at our many different events. We have live virtual Q&A sessions with me. We have live Comedy Cures comedy events, live health builder workshops with Jackie, Brian, Ariana, and myself, a robust monthly newsletter, plus much more. So just go to comedycures.org and look for the membership level that feels right for you. And don't forget, you can also give one as a gift to your patient if you're a doctor, to a friend, to a family member. It really makes a very unique and personal gift. That's comedycures.org and sign up today. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. 
They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.